All right, so um, today's lesson is about uh, trading like a pro. And a couple of words before I start our uh, weekly lesson, I want to tell you a couple of, uh, to, to talk a couple of words about uh, my trading style. And uh, first of all, I'm trading with a well-defined uh, strategies. All right, 1070, guys, you know, sorry for the break, but 1070, it's there. All right, all right. I took, I, I took my first partial. Just took it. Hopefully, it's going to uh, move uh, upwards, but looks nice. All right. So um, right now I have 1600. I took 1600 partial. Uh, I have I, I, I logged 245 dollars. Unrealized uh, about 200 dollars, and hopefully it's going uh, upwards. All right. Back to back to the lesson. So uh, I want to take to tell you a couple of things about my trading style. And first of all, I'm trading with a well-defined. I'm trading with a well-defined uh, strategy. Um, when I enter trade, I like to know very very clearly what is the win ratio of this strategy. What is the its expectancy? When I'm building a trading strategy for me, after building a prototype. I'm running the strategy on a simulation platform in order to see how well or how bad did the strategy, the strategy behaved in the past. Usually I'm running each trading strategy on a vast array of data. It may be about five years of data and the simulation program should give me at the end of the simulation a report that elaborates and, and gives me uh, it gives me a report uh, how many trades did it take what is the win ratio what is the loss ratio and expectancy expectancy is uh, on average what uh, uh, on a successful trade was is what is the average um, what is the average gain and uh, on a loss what is the average loss I also analyze all of my trading strategies in the live market to see if something in the market is hurting the effectiveness of my strategy. I don't like to guess. I don't like to get tips. I just like to know exactly what I'm doing. Where is my stop? And where and how am I going to manage the stock and take profits? This way I feel most confident. On an average day, I may open up to six trades in the day trading style and on average between one to two swing trades. That doesn't mean you can't have good business in Wall Street trading much less. In fact, I remember when I traded uh, in Wall Street, a trader that sat beside me, um, uh, he was, uh, uh, that trader was capable looking at the screen and not entering a trade for five long hours and that would have drove me mad at the end he would enter one or very a, 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 a one or two very very precise trades and that's all that's all he did uh, throughout the day and of course this is a very very different trading style but he was one of the best traders i've ever seen if you are looking to make more than six trades a day, usually it's going to hurt your profit margin. It won't go up. Your, earn, your profits won't go up by making more trades. On the contrary, it will go down. So I limit myself. But the issue is you have to understand who you are as a person. Each trader is different and unique. You can't bend your characteristics to fit the strategy it won't work you have to live well and you have to trade well with your strategy you have to feel comfortable comfortable with the strategy so it doesn't matter how good is your strategy if it doesn't fit your character you won't be able to implement it successfully so you have to reveal who you are for yourself and then choose the appropriate strategy that fits you the best.
Let's talk a little bit about, uh, a, a, a little bit about uh, the risk. I'll just take uh, the laser mark here. Uh, let's take, t- talk a little bit about the risk. And uh, I tend not to risk more than 1% of my portfolio on any given trade. I believe uh, in risking very small portion of uh, the portfolio on any trade. Most of the traders don't like to see drawdown in their portfolio and that applies also in my case. I don't like to see a major drawdown in my portfolio. I think that risking 1% of my portfolio on any trade on one hand it gives me low risk so it cannot harm my whole portfolio too much. If the trade got go, go busted, it's not going to uh, have a, a very very severe uh, implicate a, a severe uh, a, a, you know a, a very severe uh, result on my trading account. Also, it's small enough for me not to lose my discipline and take me into a psychological stress. On the other hand. It's large enough, so a 1% risk is large enough, so I'll be able to take honest portion of gains from the market. So risking 1% of the portfolio doesn't mean I'm giving back to the market on any loser 1% of my portfolio, not at all. That only means that at the maximum, I'm willing to lose 1%. There are many times when the trade is not working and I have the opportunity to reduce on the way down and thus to limit my loss and have a loss that is smaller than what I'm allowed in the account. Usually I'm not opening more than two uh, to three trades simultaneously. This way I reduce my exposure of uh, my portfolio to risk in any given moment. And I like to trade strategies that have high success rate. That means that most of the trades I will take using that strategy will be winners. Now, there are of course other strategies with lower success rate, but one, and then one winner will make up for many losers. Although they may be very successful strategies, they don't fit me or my psychology as a trader. My character is to win as much as I can. It gives me a good spirit. It gives me a good, uh, a good environment to live in. I like strategies that give me money all the time. And even if it's not a big winner, even taking small bites from the market consistently, it will be accounted in the end uh, towards the uh, bottom line. This is a little bit about my trading style. And, um, and if anyone has ex- a question right now, I'll give a couple of moments now to ask and I'll be happy to answer them. And uh, as I said, so I'm going to give one minute for questions and then I'll move to the main subject of our lesson today, trading uh, like a pro. All right, so any questions so far? Just give a couple of moments. All right. One look on a true 1070 from 1034. Right now about 40 cents in the money. It goes up in our direction on the verge of a new high. All right. So Girard is asking, um, all right, I, I, I'll start with Mahmoud. Mahmoud is asking, do you have the same risk on every trade? Absolutely. Absolutely. If, uh, let's say, for example, that 1% of my account equivalents equals to um, 100, uh, for equivalent to $200, $200. So that means I'm going to calculate how many shares can I take on any given trade, um, taking into account that I don't want to lose more than $200. Now, there are special times in the market that I may uh, increase the risk I'm taking. For example, true, my on average, I'm not taking 3,200 stocks in a trade like I took in true. True, I took 3,200 shares. Now after the first partial, 
I, I'm still with 1600s. This is a lot, but this is a lot because this is an IPO and we know that the stra strategy on the IPO that we are implementing here in the room is very, very good. It's very, very sharp. And uh, you know, it, it, and because it has such a high success, I'm willing to increase the odds. I'm willing to increase my risk on, on this strategy, but on average, I'm taking uh, the same risk on any trade. Girard is asking, how do you determine how much can you lose on a trade? So this is a fixed amount, all right? I'm just uh, calculating how much is 1% of my balance uh, in the account and I'm using this figure on any trade throughout uh, the trading day. Bill is asking, do you have, do you take partials on lost or only on gains? So Bill, um, you know, if it's going to, if the, if for example, the trade is going up, uh, I have a special mechanism, I'm calling it um, the GPS for day trading and this tiny tool that is called GPS for trading day, for, for day trading. And actually I'm also teaching this, uh, th this tool. This is an amazing tool. It's actually um, giving you, 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 it's a very, very uh, smart Excel uh, that you are putting a couple of inputs into this Excel and it's going to give you the right directions to any stock you are going to trade. So, you know, exactly um, the, if you, for example, you are living in London and you need, you need to go from Hampstead to uh, Beckingham Palace, all right? So, uh, and if you are not, uh, if you were not born in London and actually also if you were born in London, London is such a huge city, you should, you are going to use a GPS. You are going to use a, an application like uh, l like ways uh, to get the direction and to, to, to get uh, to your destination in the shortest way. This is exactly what this GPS is doing. This GPS after getting all my inputs is going to tell me where is my first partial, where is my second partial, where is my third partial, when to reduce amount, when to increase amount. This is a great tool. It's actually, it's actually the, the, the best thing it does for us is to take uh, out all the all, all the uh, tense, all the anxiety uh, from uh, of the trading. So you know we actually put uh, all the responsibility for trading, for managing the trade on this uh, on this system, on the software, uh, and this is an amazing one. So I'm using this uh, uh, GPS. Um, B. So this is uh, the answer for Bill. Um, Thomas is asking, Shlomo, you said that uh, you back you, you back test your strategy for five years. What software are you using for it? So you know there are a lot of software to do to do it, uh, like MetaStock, like TradeStation. There are special uh, software uh, to do this uh, to do this uh, back back test. This is how we call it. Um, Dang is asking. I always want to uh, ask this question according to what you decide how much partial profit uh, you will take. So, Dang, th th this is a great question, a very very important question. Uh, but I'm going to leave this question to to, to another to another lesson when we will uh, dis discuss uh, ma ma managing uh, trades. All right. But this is absolutely very important question. Actually, I have to tell you, you have to you must have it in front of your eyes before entering the trade. Actually, before entering the trade, I know exactly how am I going to uh, trade it. Trade it. I, I know exactly where is my first, second, third partial. And of course, there is also a degree of a dynamic into that. So I'm not just going with fixed uh, fixed um, targets. All ta I have fixed targets at the start of the trade, but they are all also dynamic. Uh, and the GPS is now to handle uh, all of it, all of it. Um, all right. So um, let's get back uh, to the presentation, and I want to uh, move uh, to, to move uh, forward. So this was uh, a little bit about uh, my uh, trading style, and uh, now I'm going to talk uh, today in this lesson on one very very important thing. 
And this lecture actually is going to be on the subject, how to trade like a pro. And I can tell you that I analyzed this subject in depth. I worked with lots of traders and investors. Many of them are very, very successful. I gathered along the way 10 things on successful investors, or I would say 10 things that separate them, the su successful investors, from um, the less successful. So next week, I, I'm going to make an online workshop here in this room to you on one of my strategies, one of the 13 strategies I'm implementing each day. And I'm actually, uh, and actually you are going to get to know next week a very powerful strategy I'm using, which I call it the almighty 820. This strategy was developed for day traders and anyone here will be able to use it next week. We will also try in the workshop next week to find some opportunities in the live market using uh, this strategy. But um, today we are going to talk about two things. What does it mean to trade like a pro and how successful traders and investors are behaving also on the mental side? So first of all, I want to start and ask you, what is a professional? And please share with me your thoughts about it. What for you is to be a pro? And not only, you know, in trading, but as general, what is a professional? All right. Thomas is uh, answering pro makes money from it. Dang, sharing his thoughts with us. Come make profit each week or month. Russell is uh, answering someone who earns money doing something. Jonathan going to work every day. Bogdan, cons consistency, very, very important, right? Consistency. Silvio, to have a successful trades more than losing. Mario is answering this question, a, li a living salary, all right? A salary that we can live on it. Mahmoud has a plan that is working. All right, let's keep running here. All right, so keep typing your, que your answer. Uh, Alex is writing, work with rules and respect them. Thomas, SME, subject matter expert. <laughs> uh, Noah is answering it. Discipline and calculated traits, constant ev uh, evaluation of a uh, performation to improve. All right, risk management. All right, so there are great uh, answers here uh, for this question and uh, great answers here. Very, very good. A pro actually earns a living in the field he is dealing with, while an amateur is doing it for pleasure. We all have hobbies and we are dealing with our hobbies in order to produce pleasure for ourselves. This is the reason we are uh, dealing with the, our hobbies. The, the, the meaning is that usually we are spending money on the hobby, but we are not earning money from it. If we like, for instance, to play basketball with, with, with friends, usually we are spending money on it. We are buying professional shoes. We are buying special clothes. Maybe we are hire, hiring a basketball court to play in it. Of course, we are, you know, we are uh, buying tickets for, uh, for, for, for the, for the uh, basketball team uh, we are a fan of. So we are spending a lot of money if, ho if basketball is our hobby. Professional players, basketball, professional basketball players are earning money from it. They are not paying money to play basketball. They are getting paid for it. If we like to collect stamps, for example, we are spending money on it. In contrast, the pro is earning a living dealing in this field. He may have more or less joy doing that, but he's earning a living. One thing is the consistency and you typed it as one of your answers. The pro is producing results consistency in contrast to the amateur that in times he's doing better and in times he's doing less. 
Also, professional traders are losing in part of their trades, but the main issue here is the consistency. His psychological approach and technical approach is that he knows how to produce results consistently. And eventually, anyone here in the room, all the traders here in the room, want to achieve this consistency. And part of you are already there and living the dream. Now, let's start to see um, five differences between the pros and the amateur. And next week or the week after that, we will uh, continue uh, with the second half of the 10. So this is the first five of uh, the 10 differences. First one is the pro is playing in order to make money. Of course, he wants also to have fun on the way, if possible. But when he chose his profession, he did so because he likes to do it. When I chose trading as my profession, I did so because I liked it. But once I chose it's my profession, the pleasure becomes to be my second target. And the main target is the profession and doing it right. Let's take a hobby like playing chess. If I chose to be a professional chess player, I did it because I like to play chess. But once I chose this profession, I need to practice a couple of hours every day. I have to play in a very certain way, in a professional way, and not as I like or to do what I want to do, even if that way gives me less pleasure. I don't think, for instance, that there is a lot of fun playing basketball every day for a couple of hours or practicing chess for long hours each and every day. And, you know, it's also not a lot of fun sitting in front of my trading account after the market closes every day and analyzing all the trades I took. Because what I really want to do after finished trading is to hang out with my friends, be with my friends, be with my wife. But as a professional trader, I'm putting a big emphasis on the professional aspect and not on the aspect of pleasure, fun or excitement. A pro will reduce its risks, even if it means reducing the potential profits. From my experience, I saw many, many amateurs, traders and unprofessional traders putting a lot of their emphasis on the gain side. How much money am I going to extract from this trade? They are afraid of missing the trade, missing a profitable trade, or if they are entering a trade, they are afraid they are taking small amount. So their profits will be small if the trade will work out. What bothers them is profits and missing opportunities. But the professional is thinking otherwise. First of all, he doesn't want to lose. So he will reduce his risks to minimum and only then he will think how to maximize his profits. Let's go to the second to 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 the second day to, to the second thing the professional is choosing the field that fits him the best and what that means is that we need to know what fits us the best considering our lifestyle and our interest for example part of my friends chose to trade the forex market because this is a market that gives you trading opportunities 24 hours a day so if they want to be with their family in the evening like those who live in europe for example they can trade forex during the morning and lunch but for me it doesn't suit to work on four hours charts, for example, just to find a good entry. It's too, you know, it's too, um, it's too, too slow for me. I don't like to be limited to only a couple of financial assets 
I can trade on, and this is the Forex market. In the Forex market, you have the six majors. This is, uh, the, 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 this is uh, the six assets you are going to trade, and that's all. I like choices, and I like the fact that each day has a start and has an end to the trading day. So I chose the stock market because it gives me variety of stocks, great opportunities, and a start and an end to a trading day. Choose the market that is giving you the best working hours for you. Choose the markets and the financial assets that best fit you. If you chose the stock market, what kind of stocks are you going to trade? Are you going to trade ETFs? What is your time frame? One minute, five minutes, 15 minutes? I, for example, know a trader which he is also a CEO of a company. So he's, a, he's trading the Forex market on one hour chart. So every hour he gets back to the screen, back to the computer to see if he has a setup. So once again, choose your assets and time frame that best suits you, your lifestyle. A professional trader is choose, choosing the trading strategies that are the best for him. I can tell you that there are dozens, if not, if not hundreds, hundreds of strategies that they all profitable. They all give you profits. The issue here is not finding a strategy that is profitable, but a strategy that fits me, my character and my ambition. This is the $64,000 question trying to fit between the strategy and you, and your portfolio size. There are people who are not functioning very well, managing the money when the portfolio is larger than $100,000 or even $1 million. There are people, it affects their mental ability. Actually, most of us, when the account is going to increase, uh, it's going to affect our decision, it's going to affect our emotions. The size of our portfolio must fit not just our mental capabilities, but also our targets in trading and our financial capabilities. As I said uh, once, um, the wisdom here is to choose not just the appropriate market, but also the appropriate strategy and the best time frame to trade. Let's move on to the third characteristics that uh, separate the successful traders from those that are not so su successful. And the third one is the professional trader is the professional trader is coming to the trading day prepared. This is a very, very important one important one. It's unthinkable that a pro won't be prepared to the trading day. Of course, that preparation should fit the strategy he is going to implement. For example, I'm going through hundreds of charts every day before the opening bell. Hundreds of charts in order to be equipped with the best stocks that uh, fit my strategies. Uh, this, uh, this is, of course, part of my job. Once a week, I'm analyzing the stocks on a weekly and monthly time frame to see if there are, there are stocks that I may be interested in them in my long-term strategies. I'm listening to CNBC News to understand what are the main things in Wall Street today and how much are they going to affect the trading today? What figures are going to be released today in the economic calendar? For, for, for example, today, a, a, around five minutes before 10 o'clock New York time, there was a release of the confidence index of the University of, of uh, Michigan University. All right, this is a very, very important measure and the, 
trading day and the market is going to react to that measure, to that figure. We need to know that. We need to be prepared for that. All right. So, um, uh, uh, so how any figure, any economy, economical figure is going to affect the market? Who are the hottest stocks for today? And you are getting from us each day the hottest stocks for this trading day. Which stocks have news and therefore are going to be more volatile than others? A professional won't dare to trade if he is not ready, if he didn't prepare for the day as he should have to. If we are not in the optimal shape, we are not trading. Studies have found that if we, if we are not, uh, if we have mental pressure, like one of our family members is sick, it's going to hurt our mental situation and therefore it will affect the way we take decisions. If I feel uh, I, I'm not in an optimal shape, I prefer not to trade, not to profit and not to lose. Until this situation is over and it doesn't matter how much time is it going to take. It's better than finding you have just erased half of your account. All right, four one, fourth one, a professional is focusing on the process and not on the results. All right, a professional is focusing on the process and not on the results. The result is a byproduct of the process. Most of the people are focusing on the result. They are setting for themselves a daily target, like I want to earn $300 a day. They are focusing on this target or they are focusing on a monthly target. I want to gain $10,000 a month. I want to gain $15,000 a month or just focusing too much on their P&L, profit and loss. The problem is that results are byproduct of the actions we are taking. Focusing on results won't produce results. What produces results is the fact I have a su successful trading strategy that fits me, fits my characteristics, and I know to execute. I know to execute it. And this strategy also has an edge and it has positive win ratio and positive expectancy. I'm focusing on the process of executing correctly these strategies. This is what bring me money. The professional understand that. So he is not focusing on the result, but on the working process. He is focusing on working right. He is trying all the time to improve his working process. The professional understands he can take only what the market gives him. Usually the market is very generous to us, but taking what the market gives him, no more, no less. This is exactly why setting a daily profit target and a, a, a lot of traders, a lot of time, many traders are asking me if I have a daily target, a daily profit target. And, and by setting a daily profit target of, let's say, $300, it's not really relevant. If the market doesn't give it one day, you cannot take what the market doesn't give you. And if the market is giving you more than that, there is no logical reason not taking more than that. Each day, we are becoming part of the market and we are taking what it gives us, no more, no less. The fifth thing I want to go over is um, the pro is executing his trading plan. The pro is executing his trading plan. What does the, the, this actually, this point actually connects us to our last point. Professional traders are executing the plan in 95% of the time. 
anyone here can examine on his own if he is part of these statistics. Do you implement, do you execute your, uh, your trading plan? Do you have a trading plan? Even more than that, in the 5% of, ca of the cases when the professional don't, doesn't execute his trading plan, he is taking care that the loss will be limited. Even a professional can deviate from time to time from his trading plan. His, but, but his patience to a trade that is not part of his trading plan is very, very limited, is very, very small. He assures that the potential loss out of the trading plan will not be a big one. Each professional has found his own way to neutralize his, th this danger or how to limit this danger. And this is a very big danger. We are all human. We have to understand it. We are not computers. All right. We are not trading softwares. We are all humans. We, our fingers are going to press the, the buttons and we may all deviate from time to time from our prepared trading plan. That's okay. But make sure not to let that too much influence your results. So these are the first five characteristics of pro traders. In the next week, I'm going to dedicate the weekly lesson to a practical workshop where we will learn a great strategy, one of my 13 strategies I'm uh, trading each day and each one of you will be able to implement it immediately in your trading account. It's easy to use, it's easy to understand it, yet very, very powerful. I'm calling it the almighty A20. Um, before the end, one, um, one idiom for the end, and I really, likes, uh, I really like idioms, and from time to time you find very quality idioms. And this is an idiom of Zig Ziglar, and I'm sure uh, at least part of you know who is uh, Zig Ziglar. He's one of the best gurus today, uh, one of the best known gurus today in the world for motivation and success. And uh, this is a very nice sentence I like. Motivation is what gets you started. Habit is what keeps you going. I read it uh, once again, motivation gets you going and habit gets you, get, gets you there. Um, habits is what keeps you going. All right. Um, what actually it means is that uh, if you want to succeed, uh, if you want to become a pro or to make money consistently, you must develop the right habits. I'm here to help you doing that. But in the end, it's the responsibility of each one of you here in the room to make the right habits. I cannot force anyone here to make the right habits. No one has ever forced me to behave in a certain way. For me, it was a very tough and very painful as once I told you, I actually erased a trading account. I blew out a trading account before I achieve, a, before I was able to achieve my success. This is of course an unpleasant part of trading and I wish I could do it without, without it, without this part to be successful, but any successful person need to go through it. So thank you very much for being here with me in this uh, webinar. I wish you, uh, I wish you all smart trading and uh, great results in your trading. I'll be back next week and I'll see you all next week when we are going uh, to have a practical webinar uh, where we are going to actually learn a very, very powerful trading technique. Bye-bye and have a great uh, weekend.